Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a non-partisan forecaster from The Hill and the Decision Desk HQ, in which they currently have Republicans winning in a trifecta, taking all the three major important races, the House, the Senate, and the presidential or general election. So as of right now, they currently give Donald Trump the advantage with a 54% chance of winning the presidency over Kamala Harris. But before we get started with the three forecast from all the three major races from the hill and the decision desk hq make sure you guys are subscribed click the bell so you don't miss all my content press like button share this video don't forget if you are interested we have memberships you can find a link to that in the description section so the hill has three forecasts for each of the major races obviously the senate the house and the presidency so let's take a look at all three of them starting off with the general election so as of right now they give donald trump at least 219 electoral votes in his worst case scenario to Kamala Harris's 226 for her, you know, at the very minimum in her worst case scenario. So this is the electoral map with all the states rated. The ones highlighted in gold or yellow are obviously the toss-up states. So as of right now, they currently give Donald Trump a 54% chance to cut Vice President Kamala Harris's 46%. And they currently have Kamala Harris at 262 electoral votes as you can see right here right here as of october 30th to donald trump's 276 electoral votes meaning it's a very close and tight race it's a very close election similar to the one in 2000 which al gore barely lost to george w bush in which in my opinion i personally think al gore should have won because there's some sus stuff that happened in florida but that's not what we're talking about in today's video so as of right now they give donald trump a 51 percent chance of winning the state of Nevada. It's currently rated as a toss-up, but Donald Trump would win the tiebreaker, as you can see right here, to Kamala Harris' 49%. And as for Arizona, Trump expands his lead to 60%, nearly two-thirds, to Kamala Harris' 40%. So Arizona and the Sun Belt is pretty much locked down for the former president. Meanwhile, some of these Rust Belt states are really, uh, really close. And as for Georgia, 65% for Donald Trump, Kamala Harris is 35%. North Carolina, same thing here, 65 to 35. In Florida, it's an 84% chance for Trump, and Texas is likely, uh, and those two states are likely for Donald Trump. Virginia, surprisingly, in my opinion, should not be rated likely. I personally characterize it as lean for Kamala Harris by probably around 4 percentage points, but she has an 82% chance of winning. I think that's slightly too high because when Biden was still in the race, Donald Trump was leading in Virginia, like on average, by 0.4%. On RCP so I think this is overestimating Kamala Harris and then Minnesota she has a 77% chance of winning that state and now things get very interesting with these Rust Belt states that could be the deciding factor of who wins this election especially Pennsylvania as we all know is a tipping point state as for Wisconsin it is a toss-up but Donald Trump does win with a 54% chance according to this nonpartisan forecast from the Hill and the decision desk HQ Kamala Harris has a 46% chance of winning the state of Wisconsin. Keep in mind, it was the reddest Rust Belt state of the three in 2020, in 2016, and the Obama era. It voted to the right of both Michigan and Pennsylvania. It was the nearest of the three by 0.6%, just 20,000 votes. So I personally think that it's a likely flip for Donald Trump. I have it lean for him as of right now. In Michigan, some greater numbers for Kamala Harris, 58% chance for her, and Donald Trump is trailing, according to this forecast, by a 42% chance i personally think michigan is a true toss-up state 50 50 for either candidate i won't be surprised if kamala wins it as it was the bluest rest Belt state of the three in 2020 the polar opposite of wisconsin biden won it by nearly three percentage points by far the most out of any other rust belt state donald trump has a 42 percent chance i currently have it tilt for donald trump now i would originally have michigan going to kamala harris but because i already have wisconsin and pennsylvania going to donald trump's column the three rest Belt states don't typically, like historically speaking, they don't break apart or split apart. Therefore, if one of them goes to one candidate, the rest would normally follow. And New Hampshire is rated lean for Kamala Harris, slightly closer than Minnesota, at a 69% chance to 31% for Donald Trump. Now, my opinion, I think Minnesota is going to be closer than New Hampshire is, you know, because New Hampshire has a lot of college-educated voters but, I mean, I think it makes sense because Tim Walls obviously is the VP in his home state is Minnesota. But I personally think Minnesota will be closer than a state like New Hampshire. So, 
This is their forecast 276 to 262. And these are all the uh, toss up states. North Carolina's toss up, in my opinion, it's not. I think that's lean. That, that should be lean for Donald Trump. Georgia, they characterize as toss up. In my opinion, it's lean. Arizona should be lean, not toss up. Uh, Michigan, I agree with that. It is truly toss up. Thing. Same thing goes for Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, and Nevada as well. So their, their model currently projects a 0.4% chance of a 269 to 269 tie in the Electoral College, which is I, which I think happened in the 2000 election, which I talked about earlier. Tell me if I'm wrong. So these are the percentages, and this is their presidential election forecast. So let's fill out the map according to the forecast. As of right now, Kamala Harris is barely trailing in the state of Nevada. She is losing in Arizona by a lean margin. Georgia is lean for Donald Trump. North Carolina is lean for Donald Trump according to this forecast. He is nearly winning Wisconsin by a tilt margin. Kamala Harris is nearly winning Michigan by a tilt margin. And Donald Trump is up in the state of Pennsylvania. So we take a look at Pennsylvania. The tipping point state, as we all know, they give Donald Trump a 53% chance of winning the state to Vice President Kamala Harris's 47%. It is truly an extremely close race. So the forecast from the Decision Desk HQ in the Hill, which is nonpartisan, has Trump with 297 to 241 when you fill out the electoral map. But when you take a look at the forecast, it's actually much closer at 276 electoral votes because of the toss-up states. So now let's take a look at their Senate forecast, and then later we'll end it off with the House. So as of right now, they give the Republicans 51 seats with a 71% chance of winning. I think the chance should be much, much higher. I don't see any pathway for Democrats to win the Senate, the map is early built and favored for the Republicans to flip back control. They can afford to lose so many seats and still somehow win the House. They can afford to lose Ohio, Arizona, Nevada, Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, and still win as long as they just flip Montana, which which is looking likely for Tim Sheehy as of right now. In my opinion, this is slightly underestimating Republicans. I currently have them at 52 seats. I think 51 is slightly uh, low to the Democrats, 46 seats. Obviously, you have the two independent seats from Vermont and Maine, Angus King and Bernie Sanders, which caucus with the Democratic Party. So realistically, it's actually 48 seats. So we take a look at the probability ratings. Nevada's likely. Democrat Jackie Rosen has an 80% chance of winning, in my opinion. It's lean. Majority of polls has her winning on average by 7 to 8. I think that's completely outrageous. And it is true. Nevada t typically tends to overestimate, you know, overestimate Republican support. In Arizona, Ruben Geigo has an 82% chance of defeating Kerry Lake, higher than Jackie Rosen, and he is not even the incumbent. That goes to show you how terrible a candidate like Kerry Lake is. She's more than likely going to lose. I currently have this at 4.5 for Ruben Gallego. That's a lean margin. You have Texas lean for Ted Cruz. I agree with that. He has a 76% chance of winning. I have him up by 4 points against Colin Allred. A few polls showing it a very close uh, it, you know, tight race as it was in 2018. He barely beat Better O'Rourke. You have Nebraska, Deb Fisher going up against Dan Osborne. The Democrats chose an independent, obviously, because it's a very red state. If they chose a Democrat to run against Deb Fisher, obviously, they're going to lose very bigly. But a lot of polls actually has Dan Osborne, you know, polling neck and neck with Deb Fisher. And I believe Dan Os Osborne even called Deb Fisher a neocon. And he himself says he's going to caucus with the Democratic Party, which is going to hurt him. So I think it will go to Deb Fisher by probably around four to five percentage points. You have Florida, lean Republican. I think that's likely 75 to 25 percent, three fourths in favor of the incumbent Rick Scott. You have Hung Cow in uh, you know Virginia on the Republican ticket, uh, only at six percent. I think that's overestimating Tim Kaine's support. Tim Kaine, as we all know, was the VP selection for uh, Hillary Clinton in the 2016 presidential election. You have Ohio, which really could determine who wins this seat. And yet again, it's not really going to determine uh, who wins the Senate because Republicans still can't afford to lose Ohio and still win the Senate as long as they flip Montana, which is likely as if right now. Obviously, Tim Shee's at a 73% chance of winning this. So 54% chance for Bernie Moreno to Sherrod Brown's 46%. So the incumbent is losing in a very red state. You have Wisconsin, toss-up, Tammy Baldwin, has roughly two-thirds chance of winning the state, 63 to Eric Hovde's 37%. In terms of fundraising numbers, Eric Hovde is doing 
tremendous, phenomenal, whatever you want to call it. And majority of polls on average on RCP has Tammy Baldwin, the incumbent, only up by one and a half. And that's low considering that usually in the past she wins by close to 10 percentage points. So that's actually historically low for the incumbent Tammy Baldwin. She could lose this seat. In my opinion, she's not going to. I currently have it tilt for her by about 1%, which is in line with majority of polls on the Real Clear Politics average. You have the state of Michigan, 65 to 35 for Alyssa Slocken, who's not the incumbent. Obviously, she's formerly served in the House of Representatives, and now she's retiring that district to run for the Senate. Uh, and she will defeat Mike Rogers, in my opinion, by probably around 4 to 5 percentage points. I have that as lean. But the Hill has it as toss-up. And then you have Pennsylvania. Lean for Bob Casey, 70% to David McCormick's 30%. Now, as we all know, David McCormick originally ran as the Republican in 2022, who lost to Dr. Oz, who then lost in the general to John Fetterman. In my opinion, it's going to go to Bob Casey by just a couple points, just 2% lean margin, but it's going to be very, very close. Majority of polls has it within the margin of error. It's extremely Close. So 51 seats for the Republicans in this forecast. I currently have them at 52 seats. And lastly, you take a look at the House of Representatives. And much as of right now, this forecast, their model currently predicts that the Republicans have a 54% chance of winning the House of Representatives. Now, I was pretty skeptical about this, you know, recently that Republicans winning the House. I currently actually had the, I used to have the Democrats flipping the House because as we all know what happened to New York, some of those districts, Republicans kept losing uh, seats and their small majority kept narrowing, you know, narrowing up. And what happened to George Santos really, you know, persuade me to thinking that the Democrats would win the House. And as of right now, I currently changed that to 219 seats, uh, districts for the Republicans to the Democrats, 216. Extremely close, obviously, no matter who wins the House, whether it's the Democrats or a Republican majority, it's going to be decided by less than 220 districts. That's just my opinion. I won't be shocked if Democrats win the House. I originally did have them, but now for my final prediction, I flipped it to Republicans nearly winning the House after I took, a, you know, I took a look at districts specifically, individually, and I can determine that Republicans do have a decent shot at winning the House. And the th same thing goes for Democrats. So in the Republicans' worst case scenario, at the very minimum, they're at 209 uh, districts that they do win to the Democrats, you know, Democrats 207, and they need 218 for a majority. I have Republicans barely getting it at 219. So I won't be shocked if Democrats do uh, flip control of the House of Representatives. So as of right now, they currently have 219 districts for the Republicans, the Democrats, 216, which like I mentioned earlier, that is literally my exact prediction. So I like pretty much agree full on with this forecast for the House, even though for the Senate, I think that's underestimating Republicans. And the general election, I think it's pretty spot on with my prediction as well. So you take a look at the competitive districts, all the toss up rated ones. Uh, main 2nd Congressional District, 51% chance that the Democrat wins it. California's 27th uh, com Competitive Congressional District, which is toss up, 52% chance the Democrat wins it. California's 45th, another toss up district, 52% chance in favor of the Democrat. 55% uh, chance for California's 47th uh, Competitive Congressional District which is toss-up. Michigan's 8th uh, congressional district is a 55% chance that the Republican wins it, 55% chance that California's 13th con congressional district, which is highly competitive, obviously, a toss-up rated, goes in favor of the Republicans. New York's 17th congressional district, 56% chance in favor of the Republicans. Michigan's 10th congressional district, a 56% chance of going to the GOP. New York's 19th a congressional district, which is a toss-up rated, highly competitive, contested, 57% chance going in favor of the Democrats. Iowa's third has a 58% chance of going in favor of the Republicans. So that's that for all the competitive districts rated in toss-up. So there you guys go. This is basically, I would say, the final forecast from the Decision Desk HQ in the Hill, who is nonpartisan, suggesting that their final prediction is that Republicans win in a trifecta, winning all the three major races, the House, the Senate, and the presidential election, meaning Mike Johnson would be Speaker once again, Donald Trump would take back the White House once again, and whoever the majority leader of the Senate for the GOP is, because obviously, as we all know, Mitch McConnell is now retiring, uh, will take control of the Senate. 
So that's pretty much it. One last fine reminder is to subscribe, click the bell so you don't miss all my content. Press like button, share this video. Don't forget we do have memberships. If you're interested, you can find a link to that in the description section. That's pretty much it. Thank you everyone for watching.